Sup nerds, I'm Tom with Neverboard Gaming. Today I'm teaching you how to play Hoax. Alright, to set up the game, give every player one reference sheet, then randomly deal out one character card to each player face down. If you have any left over, go ahead and put them back in the box, they're not used. Then take all the tokens and put them in the center of the table, separate them out by type, I, I know you want to do that. Then take the double-sided hoax card, put that in the middle of the table, as well as all seven of these investigation cards. So the rule book says the youngest player goes first, but you can randomize it however you want. Go ahead and roll a die. You don't need to read that thing. Starting with the first player, secretly look at your character card, then take one resource of whatever type you want. The types are cash, prestige, and evidence. This is not a resource token. It's a different type of token. We'll talk about that later. Um, I am going to take cash. All right, so now you're all set up and ready to play the game. So on your turn, you're going to take any of the following three actions in whatever order you like. Those actions are claim, investigate, and accuse. Now you have to take one claim action. You can't take more than that, but it's mandatory. You have to take it. And the accuse action is another one you can only take once, and that's assuming you choose to. Now the investigate action you can take as many times as you want or really as many times as you can afford to take, and uh, I'll explain more on that later. So the first action I'm going to talk about is the claim action. To do this, you claim that you are one of these characters on your reference sheet, and you take the action that's associated with it. So I will say, I am the lover, and I can take either one evidence or one prestige from the center of the table. Now when I claim that I'm the lover, I'm claiming that this character card in front of me is the lover. However, since it's face down, you don't know if I'm the lover or not. I'm just claiming it, and it's up to you to decide if I'm telling the truth or not. Well, so since I am totally the lover, I am going to take one prestige from the supply. I'll put that right there. Um, then I'm just going to pass my turn to Aaron. Alright, well, as the butler... I'm going to choose another player, and that player and myself will take a resource of our choice. I'm going to choose you, Tom. Oh, right. hey, thanks. Uh, I'm going to take this cash right here. Boom. And I'm going to pass my turn to Wes. All right, well, as the son-in-law, I get to declare a type of resource token, and each player has to give me one token of that type. So I'm going to go ahead and say hand over the money, boys. Well, that sucks. Well, since I actually am the lover, I am immune to the son-in-law, and I don't have to give you anything. What Aaron just did in that example was he claimed immunity. Some characters have immunities listed on their reference sheets. What that means is you can interrupt another player's claim action by claiming that you are one of the characters that have immunity to the active player's action, thus avoiding the action entirely. When you do so, you must then rotate your character card 90 degrees to signify that you have claimed immunity. Now, it gets rotated back at the start of your turn, but you cannot claim immunity again when you have your card rotated. Alright, so the next action I'm going to talk about is called Investigate. When I take the Investigate action, first I have to pay back one resource of each type back to the supply. Then I take this Investigation deck, all seven cards, and I pick a player, let's say I pick Aaron, and I hand them that deck. Alright, so now I need to remove the card that I actually am. Here it is. And then shuffle this up and put three of them down with it. Now look at all four of these cards. The one that I actually am, three other ones. And shuffle them up and hand them to Tom so he can now investigate me. Alright, so when I take a look at these cards, I know that Aaron's true identity is one of these four, but I'm not quite sure exactly which one he is just yet. But after I do some good examining, I'll add those back to the rest of the deck and shuffle that up. And now I can't tell any other player what I just saw, and Aaron can't tell any other player what he just handed me. And now it's still my turn, so I could take another investigation action if I wanted to, well, if I had the resources to pay for them, which I don't. 
Alright, so the other action you can do is called accuse. When I take the accuse action, I pick a player, let's say I pick Aaron here, and then I take the investigation deck, and I remove from it the card of the identity I believe Aaron is. I think this is him. Now I don't show it to any of the other players, but I then slide it over to Aaron, and he has to truthfully tell me if that's him or not. That is who I am. So I am eliminated from the game, and I give Tom my resource tokens. Awesome. But now, if I was wrong, and this wasn't Aaron, then I would be eliminated, and I'd have to give him all of my resource tokens. And now, in neither case, do either of us reveal our true identities to the other players, or say what card was passed. Alright, so the players just continue taking their turns until all but one player is eliminated. Last man standing wins the game. Well, there is... There is one other thing you can do on your turn. Let's jump back to an earlier example. Well, since I actually am the lover, I am immune to the son-in-law, and I don't have to give you anything. I'm calling hoax. Alright, so what Wesley just did there is he called hoax on Aaron. So whenever anybody makes a claim action, or claims immunity, every other player has the opportunity to call hoax. When you do that, you have to place this double-sided question mark card in front of you. And actually, you can't call hoax if you already have the card in front of you. But if another player calls hoax, they take that card from you, thus freeing you up. But when Wesley called hoax on Aaron, he was basically saying, No, I think you're lying. I don't think you are the lover. So what happens next is, Wesley and I, basically any other player who is an Aaron, can have a discussion about why they think Aaron is or is not the lover, but then it's brought to a vote. We put our thumbs in, and on the count of three, we either put our thumbs up or our thumbs down. If it's majority thumbs up, or if it's a tie, then Aaron just continues taking the action as if nothing has happened. But if it's majority thumbs down, well then Aaron has to truthfully tell us if he is or is not the lover. If he's not the lover, if he was lying, then he puts one of these imposter tokens over the lover on his reference sheet. And now he can never claim that he's the lover for the remainder of the game. But what if Aaron was telling the truth? What if Wesley called hoax on Aaron, and it was brought to a vote, and it was majority thumbs down, but he really was the lover? Well then, Aaron reveals his character card and immediately wins the game. This is the only way that you can win the game without being last man standing, and it is always crazy every time it happens. Well, that was Hoax. There is a suggestion in the rulebook for how you can link multiple games together, give people points and stuff, but we never really do that in our group. Um, but I hope this video showed you how to play. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out with that. Uh, and hey, subscribe and you'll never be bored.